Hi, and welcome to this episode of the Video Game Notebook. Um, today I want to take a quick look at um, the airstrike on a port um, system in the game East Wind Rain. The War in the Pacific, 1941-1945. The game is designed by Mark McLaughlin and Chris Borderbrug. Uh, I have both. I have two copies of the game, one by Task Force Games and the original by 3W. Um, this is just going to be a series of uh, informal uh, reviews and looking at various game systems and components and um, just showing some examples of play and stuff like that so the game East Wind Rain is a strategic game of the Asian Pacific Theater in World War II each turn represents three months it's divided into an economic intelligence strategic deployment operation supply and redeployment phases the map is divided into areas for strategic movement purposes, with each area subdivided into hexagons, each approximately 200 nautical miles across. Okay, I'm not sure how clear the picture is. Looks pretty good on the monitor, but we'll see how the actual video turns out once it's um, posted online. Um, this is just uh, an example of a uh, major uh, major naval vessels. Um, let's see. You got the ship's name and then the ship type. Uh, we'll use the tone, tony or tone, uh, Japanese cruiser in the lower right hand corner for an example. Um, you got a silhouette of the ship. The first number on the left is the main gun. The second number is its anti-aircraft value. Third number is its armor. It is a fast, uh, fast ship, and it has three torpedo strength. So that's all we're going to worry about right now. I'm not going to worry about the um, special symbols and stuff. Uh, air units. Uh, the slash across the aircraft silhouette indicates that it is a naval air unit. Uh, each counter is um, five strength points. Um, on the carriers up at the top, the Akagi, um, it has a 4A in place of the torpedoes. That is the number of uh, air points or air uh, air strength that it can uh, hold. So we have 24 carrier. We have 24 air strength on the six carriers. So I have 5, 10, 15, 20, and 4. We use uh, the old Pollard Pollard markers, um, which are like this. To indicate what the strength is, you can't see that. Well, let's go here then. That would be a four um, if it faced the top. This would be a three as the unit would be reduced by one, and so on. Um, so we have 24 planes or air groups, whatever you want to call them that will be uh, coming in on the ships at anchor in Pearl Harbor. Here are the US units located in the port at Pearl Harbor. Um, the setup is according to the campaign game setup. And here are the positions of the units, um, kind of at a strategic level. Um, the first thing you need to do is determine how many air waves um, 
uh, will be in effect for the air mission. Um, you can have up to three. Um, in this case, with the number of air units that will be launching, um, there's going to be basically uh, three or more air waves. Um, so, rolling on the air waves table is somewhat redundant. Uh, however, we will go ahead and roll on the airwaves table and we will add a plus one if the target is an enemy port, bases or ships in that port. And I forgot to mention that on the aircraft the uh, dot in the upper right hand corner indicates a non-green unit. If it doesn't have the dot, it is considered green, and therefore the pilots are inexperienced and suffer various negative modifiers throughout the game. So we're going to go ahead and roll the die and add one and see what happens. And let's see, it looks like we rolled a one. Uh, mess up the focus there, sorry. I apologize again for any glare and audio problems. Uh, let's see. It's hard to see, but um, add a plus one, that's a two. Looks like we'll have up to three air waves. Um, basically what that represents is that they're just going to come in in three groups instead of all come in as one large group. Okay. Um, each wave has to have at least 25% of the available aircraft uh, um, in it, but can have no more than 10 strength points. So, in this case, we're basically going to have 5 and 10 will form one airwave. We have 5 and 10 will form the second air wave and since you can only have 10 you know that's kind of a default um, with the counters and stuff and then I guess this unit which only has four strength points um, will form the third wave um, let's see, it's supposed to have up to a quarter of the available aircraft, uh, but I think that's per wave. So, double check here real quick. Alright, I think that's correct, but I may have to do some double checking. But uh, pretty much each wave, at least one quarter of all aircraft assigned to an to an attack must participate in a wave. The player may determine any mix. Cannot exceed ten air strength points. Uh, you can divide your forces voluntarily into additional waves, providing that no wave exceeds ten or contains less than 25% of the air aircraft involved in the strike. Well, let's see, we have 24 air strength points uh, involved in the attack. And... Let's see... Actually, 6 would be... Uh, six would be a quarter. Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to do a little bit of checking on um, how that how that works because is it per wave? Oh yes, it's per wave. At least one quarter of all aircraft assigned to an attack must participate in a wave. Assigned to an attack. 
Well, anyway, I think I'm doing it right. If I'm not, I'll come back and amend that. So, what we have now is uh, you will normally you'd have to undergo an aircraft fire and all that type of stuff. So, since uh, the special rules are in effect, I don't have to do that. So, I'll go ahead and assign the aircraft uh, to their targets and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've allocated my aircraft um, against the targets. I've split up my air air points into smaller groups. Um, the first wave, this is actually the first wave, um, we're going to send three versus the Oklahoma, four versus the Nevada, and three versus the Maryland, and then three versus the California, four against the Tennessee, and three against the Arizona. Um, basically, we'll just use the Oklahoma as an example. Since there's no anti-aircraft fire because of the Japanese surprise turn, um, it's pretty much just going to be a plain airstrike uh, against the ship in port. Um, the thing is that your Navy aircraft have um, a 10 versus naval targets. Um, they basically have 10 um, combat st strength points or whatever they're calling it in this game. Um, let me double check here real quick. I get the correct terminology here. Um, each naval air strength point is worth the same as an army air strength point, except it is worth 10 points against ships. So you just multiply that by 10 is kind of how that works. So the first one, let's go back. Um, it's going to be three times ten is going to be thirty points hitting the uh, Oklahoma however you divide that by ten and you get a three um, so the Oklahoma would potentially take three hits um, I'm going to roll on the basic CRT um, that will either uh, that may or may not modify the number of hits uh, based upon a die roll ships in a port you roll you get a plus two to the die roll so I'm gonna go ahead and roll the die this is versus the Oklahoma okay uh, let's see helps if I can get it actually in camera Okay, die rolls a three, we increase that to a five. So technically, well, die rolls a three, that's also going to indicate the number of potential hits against the Oklahoma. Um, but using the basic CRT, which we'll see if I can get that into the picture. Um, that's not terribly clear, but then again, I'm not holding it terribly steady. Um, the die roll was a 3, you add 2, making that a 5, you add 1 extra hit. So technically, 4 hits went in against the uh, Oklahoma. Okay, well with that knowledge, we check the Oklahoma's armor rating. Its armor rating is a 5, which you can see right here. So what we're going to do is we are going to roll, um, I believe, five dice and total them. And if uh, the number of hits is used to determine the damage done to the ship, roll one die for each hit, total the value of the dice, and the defender. Let's see, each ship has an armor factor. Each destroyer has one 
So basically the damage done to a ship with armor is cumulative for all waves. Um, some would do with after all waves of a strike have been executed. Compare the value of the total damage to the printed armor value. Um, so no, since nobody else is attacking that one on this particular initiative and wave. Uh, you roll the dice, I'll roll, I'll be rolling, what did I say, four dice? And you add them together, and if it's greater than the armor value of the ship, uh, bad stuff happens. So, I'm going to be rolling the dice, and I'll be right back. Okay, I rolled four dice um, versus the Oklahoma's armor value of a five. I got a total of 15, which is three times greater than its armor. So, here are the different possible uh, levels of damage um, based on how much higher, equal to or higher you roll versus the armor. If it's equal or greater than the armor value, uh, the ship is at least damaged. Place a damage marker on the ship. I'm not sure where or what the damage markers are, if they're indeed the um, the Pollard Pollard markers or whatever. Those are usually indicated strength, um, but not a damage, so I don't know. I'll have to look for some damage markers. Um, if the number is double the armor value, the ship is sunk unless uh, it's sunk and eliminated unless it is in a port. In which case you put two damage markers on it to show that it has been bottomed. Uh, bottom ships can be repaired, but they can't move until at least one of the damage markers is removed by repairs. So, somewhere there must be some damage markers. Um, I placed a four underneath it to indicate that it has four hits. Um, however, we come to the third case. If the numbers triple the armor value, the ship is sunk, even if in a port. And if it's less than the armor value, it has no effect. So, the ship has been sunk. So, the Oklahoma is no more. And I will go ahead and resolve the rest of the attacks and um, let you know the results here in a minute. Okay, so after the first wave of attacks, um, the first of three, um, one, two, three, four, five ships have been sunk, um, bottomed and then sunk, basically. Um, the Oklahoma, the Arizona, the Nevada, uh, the California and the Tennessee. Looks like I can move these Japanese airplanes all the way for that strike. So the Maryland has taken four points of damage. Um, the die roll was uh, I don't know. I think a, I think about four when I got done rolling. So that was less than its armor. So it doesn't. It doesn't get a uh, damage marker since it's less than. And the number markers are removed. So basically, um, it's just kind of back up and going again. So the first wave of three attacks has been very successful. Um, <coughs> So I have another wave to go, plus a partial wave, and I'll come back and see what happens. Okay, this is the second wave coming in, and the targets that uh, they're going to attack. Um, pretty much are going to go for the cruisers and what remains of the battleships. This um, this air unit is going to attack the actual base itself, the, um, the air air base, 
and try to take out um, some of the aircraft on the field or do some damage to the runway whatever so I'll go ahead and resolve that and come back uh, with the results all right well as you can see um, the second wave was moderately successful um, the Maryland was destroyed the Pennsylvania and the West Virginia both have damage markers um, and we lost the let's see what were the two cruisers should know all these by now San Francisco and the New Orleans so and the base has nine damage points applied to it it's a major base I had a I had a minor base uh, set out originally um, but it takes 10 damage to knock a major base down to a minor base and five to knock uh, a minor base out of the game completely so with that I still have one small wave coming in and we'll see what happens in addition uh, nine nine points of uh, air units on the ground have to be destroyed as well so I need to figure out about how many units are on the ground and go from there um, I don't even remember how many of each type they were supposed to be so let me look that up and we'll be right back okay the air units that are at Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor um, for the American side uh, let's see there are seven strength points of army air two bombers and four naval air um, I scored nine hits against the base so nine error strength points have to be eliminated so I guess we will take out the two bombers or the two army army air and the two bombers that's four and I guess we'll take out the last army air for five and four is nine so I met the requirement for the destroyed aircraft on the base and that completes um, the first initiative well actually it just completes the second wave I still have a third wave coming in don't I okay well I have a third wave to resolve and that should take out the base um, let's see what happens okay so at the conclusion of the third air wave um, we can see that the major air base or the major base on Honolulu has been reduced to a minor base um, I scored something like 19 total hits against it so the air base has been destroyed and any aircraft uh, there have also been eliminated so um, that concludes the first uh, Japanese initiative uh, airstrike it looks like they're pretty well on their way to um, winning they would have a second impulse automatically um, there's really gonna, not going to be any cap very little anti-aircraft so I think it's a foregone conclusion that the two American cruisers or well actually the two American battleships um, and probably a lot of the um, light cruisers and such will be at the bottom of the harbor um, and even possibly the uh, small base uh, minor base now will be destroyed so I'm not quite sure 
if I have too many Japanese airplanes involved um, I figured that each Japanese carrier would have its full complement of aircraft um, but apparently that seems a little bit like overkill so perhaps next time I will reduce the number of Japanese uh, air power and see if we can get a little bit closer to the historical result as it stands right now um, Japanese did far better um, I believe than it did uh, far better in this game than it did historically so uh, I think I need to adjust it just a little bit to make it reflect um, the actual history of the uh, engagement. So anyway, I think I'm going to call it uh, call it a game. Um, I think I'm just barely beginning to get, to get the uh, air naval or air land attack uh, down. Um, some other time I'll try to introduce uh, some more of the game mechanics and show an example of how they work. So anyway, um, this concludes this video and I hope it uh, provides a little bit of insight into uh, one of the various aspects of combat. Um, that you can find in the game.